Welcome and hello to my talk about how to build and ship multi-architecture Docker images. My name is Stefan Scherer. I work as a senior software engineer at Seal Systems. It's a software company. Uh, we are providing products ab about printing and converting documents for our customers. Uh, the most part is on-premise installations. But I also work a lot of uh, my spare time with Docker. And so I got honored by Docker to be a Docker captain. Um, that's a title I, I got to, about my, my blog posts and my help in the community, giving talks, helping in the Docker meetup in near where I live. And I'm also promoted as a Microsoft MVP about almost the same because I look at how Docker improves on the Windows platform with native Windows containers. In my talk, I will show you a short overview how to build. We don't have a look at the orchestration level, but more from a developer side, how can I use Docker to improve my deployment to go to your customers, to your users using Docker. And so we see how we can build and, and ship Docker images, but as Peter said, not only for Linux, but also for Windows. And I have a small example um, that I will show you in real. Um, it's a GitHub repo with a, an application. And I have added uh, some Cloud CI servers. So we can, I can show you how to connect GitHub with some Cloud CI servers that helps you easily to build your application, test it, put it into a Docker image, and ship it on the uh, Docker Hub. And then finally, because we are using multiple platforms here, and I want to provide my application for all my customers. Some customers are running Windows, some customers are running Linux. Um, I want to show you how to combine a Docker image for multiple platforms and how you can do this already now with the current Docker version and the Docker Hub that's available. You might ask yourself, why should I do that? <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on Linux and all the containers came from Linux and it's, it's perfect there, it's the best supported container world there. Why should I care about Windows? Well, I'm working in a software company and what my uh, marketing and my sales uh, department says to me, well, a lot of customers we have, the most are running Windows businesses. So I have heard about Docker that's coming to the Windows world and I answered, yeah, let's try us to use Windows containers, to use the same tools I like to have them on, on Linux also for the Windows platform. Um, one question, who is using Docker regularly? I want some hands up, so I know you are awake after the, <laughs> after the meal. And who is also using some Windows servers without Docker? Yeah, there are still, still some, some Windows servers out, out there. Who has already tried uh, Docker on Windows with native Windows containers? Yeah, quite a few. Okay, more than I expected. <laughs> because it's very new and I come to these uh, conferences and talk about it to promote it that you can use the same tools. Let's have a look at uh, what a container is and what helps me as a developer um, it's a standardized package format um, with all my application code or the, the libraries in it and all the dependencies in it. So it makes my life simpler to package it and have the um, knowledge that it's running on that server and the customer side as well because all I need to run is already in the image. You can run um, multiple containers on the machine and they are isolated from each other so you don't have to think about oh my old service has an old Node.js version, my new version 
of the service has another version. How can I upgrade that on the, on the same machine? Using containers, you ship your node in version, the runtime you need, with a new image, and you're done. And it works on all major Linux platforms, but not only for Linux. In October last year, Microsoft has announced their new Windows Server 2016. That's the first server version that is, and has Docker containers enabled, so you can easily install a Windows Docker engine on it and run native Windows containers. So the ecosystem in Docker in 2017 looks more like this. You can have workload on Linux using a Linux kernel and your Linux images with the typical base images like Debian, Ubuntu, Alpine, or from scratch if you have static binaries. And, but if you have customers with um, Windows machines, you could suggest them use Docker. Um, and the containers are using the Windows kernel. And there are also some base images like this from Ubuntu. There are two major base images from Microsoft. You build your um, image layers on that. But above that level, it pretty much looks the same. If I'm a Java developer, I have my Java runtime in it, for example, an application server in it, and my um, char files, war files, whatever. Or if I, I'm distributing a database, I'm also using a base layer, have my runtimes in it, and the database. So from the developer side, it looks very similar. And I, I'm also thinking about, uh, can I use our uh, Docker for providing the same experience for my customers, regardless if they are using Linux machines or Windows machines? And what I have in mind is more like this. I have my application and have a documentation around it, and Docker helps me to distinguish which platform does the uh, user uh, run the, the container on it. And I will build some platform-specific images, but my application looks always the same, regardless on the platform. So I want to use the same image name, for example. <clears throat> I have my, um, if you know some, some images on the Docker Hub, you have your organization slash your image name and, for example, a, the latest tag or a version tag. And I want to use this same image and tag name for all platforms. Is this possible? And when I'm designing such a multi-architecture image, I should also consider um, the same interface, I call it. Um, you have your, perhaps your volume mount points, if you have persistent data you want to put outside of the container. So I can suggest you to use the same volume mount points. I have seen, for example, the Portainer UI. They have started building a Windows image, but they used the st standard Windows directory C program data. And on Linux, it was slash etc somewhere, or slash data. And I have su suggested use the same path. You're also on Windows, you're in your container image, you can decide where to put your volume mount point. And don't use the defaults, because then you have to write two documentations. On Windows, you have to do it this way, and on Linux, you have to do it that way. Use the same paths there. Same applies to environment variables, and especially your command if you have to run the container on a specific, with, with some arguments. Um, I don't want to waste enough time with only slides. I will show you some real code. Therefore, I go into my editor. I have uh, forked a tool you have seen uh, later before. It's the Docker Swarm 
visualizer from Mano Marx, one of the Docker employees. It's just an example uh, that is open source and I have just forked it to add the CI pipelines to build some multi-architecture image for all platforms I will show you. Uh, that represents just an, a Node.js service that has some, some source code inside and I will show you how to build that. I have chosen some, if I scroll down, or here, here above, I have some, if you know it, there are the possibilities with Cloud CI servers. You can add build batches to your Git repo that shows you the, the status of the last build. They were all green. And the first icon here is uh, Travis, for example. You could choose another CI service or a on-premise GitLab or Jenkins. But to keep it simple here, I just used Travis. And the next thing is I want to not only build one platform, but build it also for different CPU types. Because I'm also playing, like Lucas <laughs> shows us later on, uh, with Raspberry Pis. And I'm also trying to, to run this Docker Swarm on a Raspberry Pi cluster. So it would be cool to have this Swarm visualizer for the Raspberry Pi as well. But I need another CPU type and need another base image that is, that's, uh, fits to the ARM architecture. And what Travis does is just the simple YAML file you add to your repo. You define that you need a Docker service. And here below, you just define which build steps you want to run. If you push code to the GitHub repo, I've hidden it a little bit in a shell script, but it's more or less a Docker build, a Docker run to test the image. If it's working, you can um, run service spec tests or something like that. And if it's a release build, I use a at, uh, at git tag and push a, a tag or draft a release on GitHub. It runs some other steps here below to log into the Docker Hub and then runs the Docker push, more or less. I can show you the, the push command because there's some, some more below. But at the moment, it's only interesting the line four and five. We tag it and we push it to the Docker Hub. But what we do in, in the detail here, we add some tags for the operating system and for the architecture. As I'm using Travis with a matrix build, I will replace the variable arc with ARM 32-bit, 64-bit, and the Intel 64-bit build. <coughs> and Travis will build, uh, will start three builds in parallel to run the, the normal docker build and the docker push command. So now, what about Windows? I don't have a Windows machine, and I don't want to set up a machine. And luckily, there's another Cloud CI server here that also provides Docker builds for Windows. So it's very easy to start the same way as Travis. Uh, it's called Avaya, and you can use their latest build agent with the Visual Studio 2017 release. It's a win Windows Server 2016, and it also has Docker pre-installed. So what you can see here in my browser, if I switch to the Avaya build, if I click on the batch here, this is an example of the last git push here. It starts also checking out your source code. Um, I have added a docker version command here, so you can see it's running the latest docker 1703 enterprise edition. On Windows, you always get the Enterprise Edition on the server. And it builds the image just like the Linux version and can push it also to the Docker Hub. And if I could go back to my source code and show you the deployment step here, I scroll it a little bit up. It's also a little shell script here, PowerShell script in this case. 
It will also tag the image and push the image, in this case for the Windows operating system and AMD 64. So I have some, as you notice, some, some schema here that I want to use to differentiate all the images I will push to the Docker Hub. And if we look to the Docker Hub, there's the final image here. We have pushed with Travis and AppVeya incomplete four Docker images, three for the Linux and one for the Windows platform. They have different sizes. The Windows is a little bit thicker. <laughs> But I think that's, that's uh, about an Ubuntu some, some years ago. I, I think there will be some smaller images in the, in the future as well. But that's a, that's a standard image um, with Node.js installed here. And so, but how can we go to this step here? I want to provide my users you don't have to think about which was the tag I'm running on ARM, or on this one, this one. I want to provide this tag, the version tag or the latest tag. And for this step, I have to do two things. We have in the deployment step of the Travis build, um, if you are using a GitLab or a Jenkins, you probably have some synchronization points. We have four Docker builds in parallel and they run in different uh, speed. And what I have to do with Travis here is a, a small hack, but it's um, not very bad, I think. We, I have to, to wait for all the three other builds. I have chosen um, the Linux Intel build agent. That should wait for the Linux ARM image. It just checks, is it in the Docker Hub with this version? Okay, then we wait for the ARM64. Is it also there? Okay, then we wait for the Windows image. Then we have all four images pushed. And then comes the interesting part. There is a small tool that is a, a work in progress from one of the other Docker captains from IBM, Phil Estes. He wrote a manifest tool. That is a tool that will make it later on this year, I think, into the Docker command itself. There will be a Docker manifest command in the future. So you don't have to download it. On Travis, I just downloaded it from his GitHub release. And then here comes the magic here from in this command. I use this command to define Okay, I have four images, and I want a final tag um, with my version number. And I'm using this dash dash platforms here. It was also a great pull request from, from Lucas. I thank him so much that it made this tool so easy to use. Um, in previous version, you had to write a separate file and this just makes it with some command line arguments. What I do here is I specify I have a Linux AMD so Intel 64 bit image. I have an Intel Linux, uh, I have an ARM image for Linux, ARM 64 for Linux, and I have, I have a Windows image. And all these four images are placed on the Docker Hub with this template. So I use this uh, schema here. And these variables, OS and ARC, will be replaced by these platforms here. And so this manifest tool just looks, OK, these four images are there. It's just retrieving some, some metadata, the, the checksums for the layers, and then can push the final image into my org and, and name and the version tag. And I do the same for the latest tag. And with these two commands, um, you can see that the Docker Hub then has these two other tags that are zero byte sized because it doesn't contain really the, the layers below, so you, it doesn't count here. But it has the information that if a Docker engine from 
on the Pi downloads this latest tag, it will use these images, image layers below. And on Windows, the same. So you can provide a great experience to your users. And as I've mentioned before, the Portana, for example, on the Docker Hub already uses this tool. And if you look to the tags here, you can see the same pattern. They have their latest uh, 1.12.1 version, and they also have these Windows, AMD, Linux, ARM, another ARM, Linux, AMD, for all these versions. So they using this small pipeline to also provide Docker run Portainer slash Portainer, regardless if you're running it on a Pi or on a Windows server, or in the cloud, you just get the Portainer UI for your platform. So, then we jump back. To recap what we have done here is we have at least two if you want a multi-architecture or multi-OS, you have uh, two or more Docker builds and Docker pushes to your registry. It is also possible to use a local registry if you have private builds. It's also working with the normal registry um, UIs. And you just use this format. I add the operating system and the CPU type and, for example, my version number to tag all these images and then use this manifest tool to define my platforms I want to combine to one multi-architecture image, my template, how I've named my tags on the Docker Hub, and how I want to tag it as a final multi-architecture image. As mentioned, it's a Docker client command in the future, so we don't um, have to download <coughs> external tools but they are just discussing if it's still a manifest command or if they want to rename it. It's not merged yet. But what your customer or your users then um, gets from you is just the same experience. Above, there's an example for the bash, and the below is the PowerShell for on, if you're running on Windows. So what the lessons learned as you have seen, it's easy to build and ship applications for one um, platform, but also for multiple platforms. Travis CI, you can uh, look in my public repo how to cross-build for a Raspberry Pi. Travis normally only has Intel CPUs, but you can use a small trick to build native ARM images on there. And you can use Windows images or build Windows images using Avaya without any own setup of Windows servers. And I, what I want to, to tell you is, even if you don't are interested in Windows, but you provide a, a good Docker image on the Docker Hub, it would be very helpful if you have, for example, a Go binary and you co already compile it for Windows, and it would make, make sense to provide it as a Windows Docker image just help to grow the, the Windows Docker community there. So they have more use cases already on the Docker Hub, so you can just have the same experience there. So that was my walkthrough. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have questions, we can answer now, or you can uh, follow me on, on Twitter or look up my GitHub repos. I have several. Docker images for Windows platform, how to build that there. But I'm happy to answer some questions now. <laughs>